Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us in this session of Spokane Public Schools Keep Learning series for literacy. Today's lesson is for all our first graders out there, and any child who is interested is welcome to join us. My name is Katie Jensen, and I'm a reading interventionist and literacy coach at Stevens Elementary in Spokane Schools, and I will be your teacher for this lesson. I'm so glad you're here participating with us today. If you didn't see our previous lesson, you can find it on the KSPS website. You can still tune into today's lesson if you haven't seen any of our others. Today, we will be learning about main idea and supporting details. For today's lesson, you will need a paper and writing utensil. I'll give you a moment to gather your supplies. Let's get started. In our last lesson, we talked about how our text is a little different than the ones we've read before. It's an informational text, which means it's teaching us something. This nonfiction book is going to teach us all about apple trees and how trees are plants. In many informational texts, the author uses text features to help you understand the topic. Text features are components or parts of the story that aren't in the main body of the text. Let's look at this page from our book as an example. On this page, the author uses labels. This text feature is not part of the main body of the text. These words are outside of the paragraph, labeling parts of the picture. This makes them a nonfiction text feature. As we read our text today, we are going to be listening for facts about our topic. Our topic is apple trees. The facts that we listen for are called details. The details help support us learning about the topic. Let's start reading. Remember to be listening for facts about apple trees. At the end, we're going to write some of them down and make a diagram of an apple tree using the facts that we've learned. A Tree is a Plant by Clyde Robert Bola illustrated by Stacy Schutt. A tree is a plant. A tree is the biggest plant that grows. Most kinds of trees grow from seeds the way most small plants do. There are many kinds of trees. Here are a few of them. How many do you know? Can you remember some of the ones that we talked about yesterday? We have maples, conifers, persimmon, palms, lemon, and willow. Those are our labels, our nonfiction text feature. This tree grows in the country. It might grow in your yard too. Do you know what kind it is? This is an apple tree. This apple tree came from a seed. The seed was small, it grew inside an apple. Have you ever seen an apple seed? Ask an adult to help you cut an apple in two. The seeds are in the center. They look like this. Most apple trees come from seeds that are planted. Sometimes an apple tree grows from a seed that falls to the ground. The wind blows leaves over the seed the wind blows soil over the seed. So when we're thinking of the diagram we're going to make at the end of our reading, I just heard a fact. Our apple tree starts as a seed and the seed is under the soil. So I know that an apple tree grows below the ground and above the ground. So I'm going to need a line of soil 
Here we go. All winter, the seed lies under the leaves and the soil. All winter, the seed lies under the ice and the snow and is pushed into the ground. Spring comes, rain falls. The sun comes out and warms the earth. The seed begins to grow. At first, the young plant does not look like a tree. The tree is very small. It is only a stem with two leaves. It has no apples on it. A tree must grow up before it has apples on it. Each year, the tree grows. It grows tall. In seven years, it is so tall that you can stand under its branches. In the spring, there are blossoms on the tree. Spring is apple blossom time. Okay, so going back to our diagram where we have our soil, we just heard another fact. That seed that was under the soil eventually grows above the ground. It starts small, like the picture in our story, but then eventually, at least by seven years, it's tall enough that we can stand under the branches. So I know that we're going to have a larger tree with a trunk and branches. The blossoms last only a few days, then they fall to the ground. Now there are green leaves on the trees. Among the leaves, there are small apples. The apples are where the blossoms were before. The apples are green and they are almost too small for you to see. The apples grow slowly. They grow all during the spring and the summer. In the fall, they are large and ripe. They are ready to eat. We can see the apples and the leaves on the branches. We can see the branches growing out of the trunk. We can see the trunk growing out of the ground. We can see the bark of the tree. The bark covers the branches and the trunk like a coat. But there is a part of the tree that we cannot see. So before we start talking about the part we can't see, Let's talk about what we learned on this page. So we have our tree, and in this page, what grows on those branches? Right, leaves start to grow on those branches. And then from that and from the blossoms, what grows? Apples, that's what makes it an apple tree. We cannot see the roots. They are under the ground. Some of the roots are large. Some of them are as small as hairs. The roots grow like branches under the ground. A tree could not live without roots. Roots hold the trunk in the ground. Roots keep the tree from falling when the wind blows. Roots keep the rain from washing the tree out of the ground. So. We just heard a very important part of an apple tree. So here's our apple tree diagram so far. Do you remember what part of the tree is so important on this page? The roots. The story even says a tree could not live without roots. So we need those added. Roots do something more. They take water from the ground. They carry the water into the trunk of the tree. The trunk carries the water to the branches. The branches carry the water to the leaves. Hundreds and hundreds of leaves grow on the branches. The leaves make food from water and air. They make food when the sun shines. The food goes into the branches. It goes into the trunk and roots. It goes to every part of the tree. So another fact about what keeps our plant alive. So the roots not only hold the tree up, the roots also are like straws that suck up the water. So in order for our tree to stay alive, we need water, we need rain. Do you remember what else feeds our tree? 
sunshine. The leaves soak in the sunshine and it gives energy to the branches. This is called photosynthesis. Fall comes and winter is near. The work of the leaves is over. The leaves turn yellow and brown. The leaves die and fall to the ground. Now the tree is bare. All winter it looks dead. But the tree is not dead. Under its coat of bark, the tree is alive. Spring comes again. Rain falls. The sun warms the earth, the tree blossoms and new leaves grow. As long as it lives, the apple tree grows. As long as it lives, the apple tree blossoms in the spring and apples grow on it. When do you like apple trees best? In spring, when they are covered with blossoms? In summer, when they are covered with leaves? in winter when they are bare, or in fall when they are covered with apples. We learned a lot of facts about trees in that text. We learned about how they change and grow through their life cycle. And we also learned some of the things that they need to stay alive. For today's activity, we're going to be building this web. Our topic goes in the center. I've already written apple trees in the middle. The surrounding squares are for our facts or supporting details that we were listening for as we read. Do you remember some of the facts that we learned about apple trees? Here's our picture or diagram that we built along the way to help you remember. The first fact that I'm going to write down is that an apple tree has a life cycle. This is something that I learned from our text. Another fact that I wrote is that an apple tree needs water and sun. Can you think of some more facts that I could put in my boxes? Your job is to complete your own web with the topic in the center and the facts or supporting details in the surrounding squares. Once you've finished your web, draw that diagram. Show the different facts that you wrote down on your web. Don't forget to label, just like the book. You need your own text features. So I'm gonna look at our diagram here and decide on something to label. And I think I'm going to label the branch. So when I get ready to label, I need to stretch my sounds and listen. Branch, say it slow with me, branch. What I like to do is pretend that I'm taking the word branch, throwing it in my mouth, chewing it up like bubble gum and stretching it out real slow. So let's throw the word branch in our mouth, chew it up like bubble gum. And now let's stretch it slow with me. Branch. What did you hear first? It's a blend, kind of tricky. I hear brr, which is br. Let's stretch it again and listen for the next sound. Branch. What did you hear next? It's a vowel. I heard the ah sound for a. The next sound you're going to have to listen really carefully for. Listen close. Branch. Do you hear that letter that's hiding? I hear the n sound for n. Now we are on to our final sound. Let's stretch it out one more time. Do it with me. Branch. Do you know that ch sound? It's two letters. We're looking for the digraph C H ch. Let's check and make sure that it says branch. Branch. Do I have all my sounds? Awesome. Then I would be ready to label the next thing on my picture. Here are a couple of other things that you could add to your picture and label.
I have enjoyed doing some literacy learning with you today. Thank you for joining me as you keep learning from home. I look forward to seeing you again for our next lesson on KSPS. Thank you.